so the eigenvalue problem we talked a little bit about last time. It's pretty uh, common in engineering, but um, basically, if you have a matrix A and a vector B, V, if there's a vector V that, when multiplied by A, is equal to a scalar times itself, then that is said to be an eigenvector. Okay? Don't worry about the, where the name comes from or anything like that. Like it's just the, the vector V that satisfies this equation is an eigenvector. Okay? Uh, the lambda, the constant lambda, is called the eigenvalue. Okay. <coughs> so, of course, you know, this equation, as it's written here, is sort of implicit in V, right? V is on both sides of the equation. We're not used to solving equations like that. So let's rearrange it a little bit. Let's let's pull let's pull this guy over. Now remember this is a this is a vector equation. So a times v, that's a matrix A times a vector V, that gives you a vector, right? A matrix times a vector, you get a vector. So that has to equal to, you know, an equation. If you have a vector in one term, all the terms have to be vectors, right? So that you can always make sure things make sense that way, right? So in this case, you have a scalar times a vector. That gives you a vector. So you have a vector and a vector. Now I want to factor out that vector. I want to factor out the vector. But in order to do that, for my equation to make sense, I have to put the identity matrix there, right? So the identity matrix, 1, 1, 1, right, on the diagonal, for, for a 3 by three, 3 matrix. So the identity matrix, the, any vector times an identity matrix just gives you back the vector. Right? So I didn't change the equation at all. I just made it consistent because now I have a, a matrix A and I'm subtracting the scalar times something, and that something better be a matrix for this term in here to make sense. Okay. So uh, for this equation to, to not have a trivial solution, okay, the trivial solution would be v is the zero vector. Like all the entries in v are zero. That's always going to be true, but that's the trivial solution. So for this equation to not have a trivial solution, this term, the determinant of this term has to be Basically, this term has to be singular, or another way to say that is the determinant of this must equal zero. And the lambdas are called the eigenvalues. Right. So <coughs> let's look at an example. See, we'll just do a two by two. Uh, these hold for any size matrices, but let's look at a two by two, just to keep the example shorter. <clears throat> okay, so we're, we want to. The procedure here is first we're going to solve for the eigenvalues, the lambdas, right? So we want to solve for the eigenvalues first, right? and so remember that's just the determinant. Of a minus lambda i, right? and so if I write that out, that's the determinant of a four minus five two minus three minus lambda one zero zero one, right? or four minus just performing the algebra. 4 minus lambda minus 5, 2 minus 3 minus lambda. All right, now, what's the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix? All right, remember my x, right? So it's, it's this guy times that guy minus this times time, times that guy. So Four minus lambda minus three minus.
minus lambda minus minus five times two. And if you work, you know, if you multiply all that out, you get this thing. Lambda squared minus lambda minus two. That thing is called the characteristic polynomial. It's the characteristic polynomial of A. Okay? Now, you got a lambda squared there. That how, so how many lambdas are there? Two, right? We can use the quadratic formula to find it. If I had a three by three matrix, my my uh, my characteristic polynomial would be like lambda cubed plus some other term. So how many lambdas would there be for a three uh, three by three matrix? Three. Right? If I had a four by four matrix, my characteristic polynomial would be lambda to the fourth power times some other term. So how many lambdas would there be? Four. Okay. For an n by n matrix, how many eigenvalues would I have? n. n. Now, some of they may not all be unique. Right? In some cases, you can have repeated eigenvalues. So you can have multiple eigenvalues that are minus ones or whatever. You can also have zeros. All right. So uh, we can use a quadratic formula, but uh, this is easy, easily factorable uh, such that we have this guy, so the solution then is lambda 1 and 2 are the values minus 1, 2. Right? So that's how we find the eigenvalues. The determinant of A minus lambda I, just do the algebra to get the characteristic polynomial. Factor or solve the characteristic polynomial to get the roots. The roots are the eigenvalues. Okay, so then how do we find the eigenvectors? So each eigenvalue will have its own eigenvector. So we're going to say for lambda 1 equals minus 1, and we're going to plug it back into the equation. Remember our equation is A minus, in this case we're going to say lambda 1 I times X is equal to zero, the zero vector. Right? And we're trying to solve for, I think, maybe in the, in the notes that was a V, so let me just use a V. So this is V. And so we're trying to find the V that makes that equation true. And let's just use our row operation. So we have the matrix A, which is 4, minus 5, 2, minus 3, minus lambda 1 is minus 1, times the identity matrix, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Which, if we work everything out, that becomes minus 5, or 5 minus 5, 2 minus 2. All right. And then that's x times is equal to 0, 0, and we're looking for x. So let's, even though it's kind of silly, let's do our row operations. Let's just, I'm going to do two at once, right? Because there's two obvious ones. How about we multiply the first row by one fifth and mu multiply the second row by one half? And so if we do that, so one half row two and one fifth row one gives us 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, 0, 0. <clears throat> now, can I do anything? Is there any row operation I can do to get this thing in, into sort of a, 
identity metrics looking way. And you might say, well, multiply the first row by minus one and add it to that. What happens? You get minus one, zero, and so then you have a row of zeros. Okay? Well, let's just do it. So minus one times row one plus row two. One minus one, zero, 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 zero. Okay, this is what's unique about eigenvectors. And it doesn't matter if it's a 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 or whatever. You're always going to end up with this, this situation. Uh, let's exclude, uh, let's assume the eigenvalues are real and unique for now. Okay, So they're not repeated and they're not complex numbers. Which in general they can be, but the matrices with that wheel deal with, we'll, we'll always have real eigenvalues. Okay? So, you'll always end up with a scenario like this. So what does this mean? Turns out that uh, the matrix A minus lambda I is, called, is said to be rank deficient. And there are, there are an infinite number of X2s. Like, the, it's free. You're free to choose X2 however you want. Right? So, Let's choose x2. So, right, the x2 being the, the 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 because that's the second equation. If it was if it was a three by three and this was the third row, that would then you choose x3, right? So you just set one of the components of the eigenvector to be anything you want. Right? So, and again, I'm using x. I think in my notes I said v. So let's let's say, keep it consistent, right? So v. So here I'm going to say V2 is free, so choose it to be V2 equal to 1. Right? It's usually, usually just set it equal to 1 and then work it out. Right? So if I set V2 equal to 1 and then I write down the first equation, the first equation becomes V1 uh, minus V2 is equal to zero, therefore V1 equals to V2 equals to one. Right? So the eigenvector associated with this lambda, lambda one, is one one. Okay? Now, the, the, f the, the fact that, what, what if I would have chose V2 to be two? What would I have here? What if I had chosen to be three? Three, three. All right. So this is this is what is going on here. There's an infinite number of solutions. Right. Whenever you have this rank deficiency, there's an infinite number of solutions. Okay. So if one one is an eigenvector, any scalar times it is also an eigenvector. And so whenever you do an eigenvalue vector solution in MATLAB, what you'll see is usually these are uh, ne they're almost never uh, whole numbers like this. They're, they're almost always uh, some decimal, and it's because they've been normalized, right? They, they've been uh, what they've been. Uh, they're unit vectors. Right? The magnitude of, is one, so they normalize everything to be. So they divide by the sum of the, the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Right? So they have a unit vector because that's also an eigenvector. Okay, so then for lambda 2 equal to 2, we want to solve this a minus lambda 2i now. And I'll just go quickly. What you end up with is 2 minus 5. 2 minus 5 uh, equal to 0, 0. If we just multiply the first row by minus 1 and add it to the second, we get 2 minus 5, 0, 0, 0, 0. 
And so then again, V2 is free. In this case, I'm going to choose it. I'm going to choose it to be V2 is equal to 2. I can, I can choose it to be whatever. It turns out if I choose it to be 1, I'm going to end up with an eigenvector that has fractions in it, and I don't want to deal with fractions right now. So if I choose it to be 2 and then I write down the first equation, then I have 2x1 minus 5. Um, I keep using x. I'm sorry. 2v1 minus 5. V2 is equal to 0, 2V1 minus 5 times 2 uh, is equal to 0, 2V1 is equal to 10, V1 is equal to 5. Right? So then in this case, the eigenvector is 2, I'm sorry, 5, 2. So there's an example of how to solve for eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And I want to take a little aside here. <coughs> 